Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. Uh, before I get into the video, I gotta remind you we are giving away a $99 Nintendo Switch eShop gift card. To enter, head down to the description or the pinned comment. Uh, we added, if you've already entered, we actually added some new ways to enter, so I would check it again, trying to promote our podcast. All right, let's get into some big news here because while we head into the weekend and we had the Nintendo Direct, there was actually more news coming that we knew about. We weren't sure what news was going to end up being for Switch. And of course, we're talking about BlizzCon. So BlizzCon had this online digital event, all this stuff. Most of the big news is already out from it. And we now know of a couple big things coming to Switch, including some Diablo news. Remember, we did get Diablo 3 on Switch. Uh, but first, before we get into the Diablo news, let's actually talk about the Blizzard Arcade Collection. So the Blizzard Arcade Collection is now available on Switch, like literally right now. Uh, you can play... Uh, well, basically, it's got three games. So it's got Blackthorn, uh, which is as a mercenary captain, Kyle Blackthorn, traverse an alien planet and liberate the Androthy people and claim your destiny. It's another arcade classic called The Lost Vikings, where you help three Vikings, Eric, Balog, and Olaf, overcome challenging platforms and puzzles to find their way back home. And then Rock and Roll Racing, which it says Rock Out is the raddest vehicular destruction derby this side of 1993. RNRR is back with original rock and metal soundtrack hits, plus a few surprises. And Nintendo's been promoting this as well. So this isn't just Blizzard throwing this out there. Uh, Nintendo has partaken in the festivities. Now, there's actually something interesting about, about this collection because in addition to the arcade collection, they're actually offering what's called a Blizzard's 30-year celebration collection, which is also available on Switch. Uh, this pack not only includes the new retro arcade collection, which is sold separately as well, but also a cache of commemorative in-game content for Overwatch and Diablo 3. Keep in mind you need to own both of these games to actually make use of this. The games aren't included. It says StarCraft Rebellious Marshal Jim Raynor is touching down in Overwatch on the Raynart legendary skin for Raynart, bringing with him a supply drop of classic loot boxes, golden loot boxes, which include a guaranteed legendary, along with a commemorative 30th anniversary icon and spray. The bundle unlocks the following items in Overwatch when you purchase that 30-year celebration. It includes Blizzard's 30th Anniversary Portrait, Blizzard's 30th Anniversary Spray, uh, Reinhardt, a Legendary, five classic loot boxes, three golden loot boxes, and then for Diablo's Dark Wanderer Again Seeks the East, adopt the guise of Tristram's Fallen Warrior in Diablo 3 with a terrifying familiar transmog set, wings, pet, and portrait. It unlocks this in Diablo 3, a Terror Unleashed Wings, the Dark Murgler Pet, Dark Wanderer Portrait, and the Wanderer's Transmog Set. Uh, it's going to end up costing 30 bucks for this. So you're basically paying for some cosmetics, but you do get the arcade games included. So that is of note here since, uh, what was the pricing on those arcade games uh, originally? Let me see here. I think, uh, the pricing was... Now, when you consider the pricing of the arcade games are $19.99 on their own, you are basically paying $10 for the 30th celebration cosmetic sort of items, uh, in Overwatch and obviously in... Uh, Diablo 3. Now, I said there's going to be some Diablo news, and that's not the Diablo news I'm talking about. So, during uh, this event, they unveiled Diablo 2 Resurrected, which is what you could basically consider a Diablo 2 remake slash remaster. And my lord, does it look really, really good. Uh, hopefully, they don't mess this up because this looks phenomenal. And given that Diablo 3 is great, Diablo 4 has looked pretty good so far. Uh, I think Diablo 2 Resurrected actually looks just fantastic, and I think we can have some relatively good faith it's going to turn out. Well, it is coming to Nintendo Switch. It's actually coming to all platforms, all major platforms, Switch included. Uh, it basically, here, here's like the PR they put out for it. Diablo 2 Resurrected includes all content from both Diablo 2 and its epic expansion, Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction. Bad your way through icy caverns, horrific tombs filled with undead abominations, and frozen wastelands to the frigid summit of Mount Ariat and Stop Bale, the Lord of Destruction. Raise hell with two Lord of Destruction playable classes, the cunning assassin, master of traps, and shadow disciplines, and the savage druid, a bold shapeshifter, and summoner who commands primal elemental magic. That's right, folks. We're going back to hell here with Diablo 2 re Resurrected. So this is awesome to see this coming to Switch. I feel like when we when we talk about games coming to Switch, sometimes we are not fully um, 
invested, I guess is the way to put it, in these third-party offerings. I have spent a lot of time, especially over the last few days, debating with people the relevance of AAA third-party games on Switch because Diablo 2 is definitely a AAA game, even though this is the resurrected version, not the original. Of course, the original is an all-time classic. So, yes, uh, it's still a AAA game coming to Switch, just like we're getting Overwatch 2, which, by the way, there was news on Overwatch 2. The news was basically no news, if you really if you really want to know. Uh, Overwatch 2, it, basically, they need time to ensure it's a worthy successor. Now, we've heard the game's kind of in development hell, but still somehow progressing. Uh, in fact, you know what? Screw it. Here's here, here's the news on Overwatch 2, which was already announced for Switch. So we've been talking about the game, about this universe. I know you all love it so much. Right now, we can sit down and have a night of Overwatch 2 and have a really fun experience. And I think we need some more time till we can say it's perfectly polished in a way we want it. So basically, they have a playable version of Overwatch 2. Just not really ready for public consumption. Uh, we've made such incredible strides since we first announced this and showed it in the community at BlizzCon 2019. We want to create something that really moves people, that really touches people. We want it to become part of your life and for you to experience it. Our goal is for Overwatch 2 to be the worthy successor, to be the first game, to be the next evolution, to be a true sequel. And then they did like a behind the scenes kind of thing with Overwatch 2. So it, it, it's, it, it's, it is what it is. You know, what are you, you going to do? The game's going to come when the game comes. Uh, probably 2022. I think, I think it's been officially delayed to 2022. So that's... But, but, but still, think about this. For the first time in really a long time, we have a generation of Nintendo console where we can legitimately watch a third-party stream and actually think we might get some content coming to a Nintendo platform out of it. BlizzCon is always hype for PC fans, always hype for other consoles, and now it's hype for Nintendo too because a lot of these announcements, the Overwatch 2, the arcade stuff, the 30th anniversary celebration, and now Diablo 2 Resurrected are coming to Switch. Yeah, the World of Warcraft stuff they announced, not necessarily relevant. I'd love to talk about that maybe in a future Prime News episode. Not really relevant to this video today, but I honestly... I'm just excited that we could watch third-party things like this and actually expect something beyond, say, the super casual Just Dances of the world. Like, oh, you can always watch an Ubisoft thing and be like, oh, yeah, we're going to get Just Dance again. But you legitimately might get something else. You might get an Assassin's Creed game. You might get a Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom battle. You can, well, I, I was about to say you could legitimately watch EA, but, I mean, until EA actually shows they give two shits about Switch, I, I suppose we shouldn't really... Get two shits about EA if you just own a Switch and don't plan, don't plan to play EA games. But still, legitimately, there are reasons to be excited as a Switch fan for third-party content, even as people are so scared that PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X are going to take third-party games away from Switch. I don't really know how that's going to happen, if I'm completely frank with you. Switch already only gets a minute fraction of AAA third-party support, and the minute fraction they get... They're going to keep getting because the Switch is going to be a 100 plus million seller and those third party games are selling. Companies don't want to leave money on the damn table. So if there's more money to be made by maybe dumbing down a game enough to bring it to Switch, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. Plus, Switch can now have like a streaming thing, although I don't think, you know, it controls the one that they released here in the West. I don't think we've seen a lot of success in terms of sales for that, but whatever. The point is be happy. We had something happen at a BlizzCon that legitimately felt like Switch owners should be hyped. As for me personally, I'm not really interested in the arcade collection. I know there's going to be some people that are. They are classics. I did play some of those in the arcades when I was a kid. It's just not really my cup of tea. Um, I've never been massively into Diablo. When it comes to Blizzard, I'm basically a Warcraft guy. I play World of Warcraft even still to this day. Not, you know, I don't spend as much time as I used to. God, but I, still, uh, I play World of Warcraft to this day uh, occasionally. And then, you know, I, I like Warcraft 1, 2, and 3. I also like StarCraft. Uh, those craft games are my cup of tea. And right now, those games don't really exist on the Switch. Hopefully that changes someday down the line. I mean... It probably won't, but it's whatever. I also PC games, so it doesn't really bother me. That's usually where I play those ones. But anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rumpelgans from Nintendo Prime, and this was your BlizzCon update for Nintendo Switch 2021. Catch you guys in the next video. Yes.